Hello and welcome to this video. This is a video that I've wanted to do for a long, long time. It's all my kind of top tips and tools you need to start making handmade cards. Um, so I mean, I'm gonna try and make it as short as I can, but I do realize that I do have an awful lot to share with you um, and I get a bit excited <laughs> because I remember what it was like when I first walked into a card shop, a craft shop, um, and it was nearly 30 years ago um, and I just walked in and was like wow whilst I was excited because there was just so much stuff and um, I had no idea what all the stuff was what I needed how to start where do you even start um, and it was just too overwhelming and I kind of just kind of walked out and went oh and, and I know it's the same these days as well. So when you're looking through um, YouTube and Instagram and social media these days, everyone seems to make such perfect cards. They all look lovely. No one has any problems. Everyone understands the lingo and the jargon. And it's just, you kind of sit there and go, I have no idea what they're talking about. Um, so I am here with this video to kind of go through some of the, say, some of the basics and the introductory bits, really. Um, hopefully I've got everything out that I need. I think I have. Um, but um, you might see me get up. Who knows? But uh, oh, I've got a bit of hair there. There we go. Um, so I am here. Um, so let me introduce myself to start with. My name is Natalie O'Shea. Um, I have a website called The Card Making Academy. And as the name suggests, that is my goal in life is to kind of cut through all the all the blurb um, and make card making easy and help you understand it in language that you understand as well. I'm not going to use all the all the jargon and that. Um, you can find out more about me and what I've got to offer and what I do at the cardmakingacademy.co.uk. So feel free to um, have a look at that. Um, now I am also a stamping up demonstrator and all that means is that I, I after over my 30 years of experience I've come to love a company called Stampin' Up. Um, it doesn't mean that that is actually all the products that I use because they pretty much do everything um, that I need for my card making but I'm not, I'm not daft I know there are other makes out there and things like that um, so I'm very au fait and I, I was using those for years before I came a demonstrator but some of the products that you will see will have stamping up over them so if you see that that's what it is it's an American company um, and you can only buy their stuff um, through a demonstrator you couldn't walk into a craft shop anywhere in the world um, and buy it. Um, so that's what you might see um, when I'm showing you examples of things that I use. Um, I mean, you can buy the products from me, but this isn't what this video is about. Um, I will share some links as well, so you can go and have a nose at things and see a little bit more detail about them, um, just so you can get a feel for what it is you're looking for. Um, but um, as I say, that's not what this video is all about. It's all about, oh my goodness me, where do I even start? So, should we get started? I'm going to change my screen so you can see this. You can see my stand there, so just ignore that. Um, but I'm going to go through um, the things that I think you need to know. So, first and foremost, if you have never crafted before, never made a card before, you have absolutely no idea where to start, then this is where I would recommend that you start. There are plenty of companies, so there's your stamping up, that's what you'll see. So this is just an example of, of one. Um, so you will see lots of um, kits, and a kit is a perfect place to start. So stamping up has a kits collection, so this is just an example. So I just wanted to bring this in first and foremost, because you literally do not need anything else other than the content of this box to make your first cards, and that's why I think it's easy. So let's open the box. I have opened all the stuff in it. It comes a little bit neater than this, but I just wanted to kind of go through what a kit like this um, includes. Um, so let's get rid of that. I'm gonna pop things back as I go. So it includes, it will make a certain amount of cards um, so that it will often have envelopes. So these are envelopes to fit, um, and they're all decorated prettily inside. So they've got different patterns inside there. Um, and that's great because they come with it. So you haven't got to find an envelope or make an envelope to match the cards. They are included. Then what else do we have? We have in here what we call, so some people call them card blanks. Some people call them card bases. And they are the actual main bit of the, oops, put that to one side, um, of the card. It's the card, the bit that opens, but they're often like this. They have a, what we call a score line going down the bottom. Um, which makes that fold and you just literally fold them in half to create your card and it could be that your card is landscape which is that way or it could be portrait in design 
um, or it could be either, it could be up to you. So for example, in this kit, you've got some patterned card blanks, um, various bits there for you. Now, kits always come with instructions, so you are free to copy the instructions as they are, um, or you've got all this stuff, you can do what you want with it. It's your kit, you're being creative. If you don't wanna follow what the instructions say, don't feel pressured to do that. So then we have kind of some layers of bits and bobs. So these are, um, some people will call them mats, some people will call them layers. Um, sometimes I call them panels, it just depends on what you want. But mostly they're the layers that go on top of your card. So here's, for example, your card blank. Here is another layer that goes on and we layer and layer up. Now in this instance, we have some layers that are already got some detail on. We've got some images on there. So in this case, we've got some lovely flowers. You might have a layer that's textured. So this is like corrugated card as such, because it just adds some more detail and texture to your cards. So again, all this is included in the kit. Then you might have something like these, which are called die cuts. Uh, we're not gonna get into the why the die, um, but when you hear a die, it means a shape. Now that shape could be a number, it could be an image, it could be anything, letter. Um, so these are die cut shapes. Sometimes they've got glue on the back, sometimes they haven't. Um, but you just pop these out. So they've already been cut, so they literally pop. It means you haven't got to cut them out with scissors. And here we go, here's a flag that's in that same corrugated, just pops out as well. So lots of die cut things there. And as I say, they can often be... I mean, there's some labels as well, so different shaped labels, and they just pop out. But often they can be, um, as I say, adhesive as well, so they could already have a glue on the back. Um, this is an acetate box, because this particular kit comes with a box. Um, and also this particular kit comes with, um, and when I say it's got everything in there you need, here's some twine, so this is like baker's twine, what they used to wrap up baker's um, bread and things with, um, just white. But this could be coloured as well, so white is always a good thing to go for because you can always add colour to these things. Um, but here we have two, <laughs> let's put that to one side, two sorts of adhesive. Now this one is what we call a glue dot that actually has paper, it's got a printed pattern on there. Um, so if I go, you can't see, <laughs> you can't see. But basically it's got paper here and it's stuck to a piece of acetate. So you can put something, so let's say a craft knife, or, um, and again, that's just a knife, or some kind of pokey tool, tweezers, anything like that. You literally put something sharp underneath, and you can lift that off, and that's got glue, it's sticking to that now, and I can stick that on what I wanna stick down, and then I peel off that layer of paper, and we're done. Now, the other way to do it is to peel off the layer of paper, and I don't think I'm gonna get this done. <laughs> You can't see, there we go. Of course the cat wants to come in now. Um, so you could peel the paper off and you could stick whatever it is to that and then peel it off. So either way of doing it, but it's just a, it's just a bit of dry glue um, that you can use there. And then we have these. Now we call these dimensionals, but they're 3D foam tape. So if that's anything that you heard, now this comes in various formats. On this particular one, it comes in hexagon and this is now sticky, it's sticking to my finger and it has this piece of paper on the top here that I would just peel off and stick something else to. So double-sided adhesive, and you can see, it's, it just adds that little bit of dimension there. Can you see, is that focusing okay? Yeah, there we go. Um, and you can layer two or three of these on top, so if you want something to really stand out, you could layer as many as you wanted to. Just bear in mind that the, the fatter you make a card, the more layers and that that you put on, um, generally the more it's gonna cost you to post. However, if you're giving it to someone, it really doesn't matter. I put that back badly, but that will do the job. Okay, so that's two different adhesives. There are lots of different adhesives and they all do different things. But for this kit, that's all you need. So there's that. Then we have something um, which we would call an embellishment. An embellishment could be anything from the twine to ribbon to these dots to rhinestones to sparkly stuff. Um, it's that just fit, little finishing bit, that je ne sais quoi, that finishes your projects off. And so for example, these are like uh, enamel dots. So they're nice and shiny. They're already self-adhesive. So again, I just need to pop those off and stick them on where I want. That's kind of your basic kit. Now this particular kit is actually a, um, has a stamp set to go with it. I keep putting that up, oh, cause some are up the right way, some aren't. Um, so these sort of things, we will go through this briefly. So some of the kits you don't need to stamp. 
so you just put them together you pop everything out you're good to go um, a lot of packaging ones are like that and you don't need to do any more it will come with printed sentiments and all things like that but for example in this particular kit and um, this does have a stamp now we'll go through stamps a little bit in a minute so I'm not going to go too much on about it but this will stamp up now the only thing I can kind of say for this is you, if you go back to a post office, they've got an ink pad, don't they? I'm going back, I'm showing my age, I know. And they got a thing and they stamped and they stamped on your envelope and so they inked up the stamp and put the ink on the envelope. It's exactly like that. Um, but we have to have something for our stamps to stick onto. Um, so that's what this is. Again, I'm going to go through this again in a little bit. And this is a baby ink pad. So really we just ink up our our image there or our sentiment and we stick it on our um, work so this can be sentiments images anything I'm gonna go over it a little bit in a little bit but I just wanted to kind of say these kits come with that now that's all that for less than 19 pounds I think that's amazing for this particular kit there's nine cards in it and a box so you could um, make the nine cards and send it or you could make the box and give it the nine cards and the box as a gift but that just gives you an idea. So that's a kit, that's what you can get. Some kits won't include everything and there are other companies that you might have to have scissors, you might have to have glue, you may have to have other things. They'll normally say on the box what you need, um, but just for these ones, nothing else is required. You don't even need scissors or anything and say the glue is even included. So if you're brand new and you've never done anything, then I really, really, really recommend that you start with something like this because it just you've got everything you need you don't need 101 things you don't need to spend 100 pounds or dollars um, or whatever your currency is and um, you can just get on with it and you can be creative there is instructions in there as well and um, you can have a result and a good professional result in no time at all so that's my first top tip tool <laughs> But let's go back to complete and utter basics. So if you want to, you don't want a kit, you want to make your own cards. Well, let's have a look. So I've got everything piled up here. So <laughs> I'm going to show you these things first. So I mentioned card blanks before. So obviously they come in kits. But then there's also things like this. These are note card kits. So these are smaller cards. But there's 20 card blanks, which have a score line down them already. Um, and 20 envelopes, so they're the great basis to start making your own cards from. So you can buy them like this. You can also buy them in different colours. This, this one here has a foil um, frame around it, so you can just decorate it in the middle. So they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and colours, foiling, various things. I even wanted to show you this. I mean, look at this one. How intricate is that? Wow. So that's actually laser cut, um, but it does come like that. You really don't need to do a whole lot of decoration to this. Maybe a piece of um, coloured card behind that and just a sentiment on a small label. Let that gorgeousness do the talking for you. But hopefully that gives you kind of an idea that you can buy these pre-made card blanks, card bases already um, in, the right, in the right size scored for you to make the folding easier so that it, it's you, you know that that's done correctly um or as super duper as the ones in that tin so that's your card base card blank but what if you can't find card bases or card blanks in the color or the size that you want well here we go you buy some card now card is a contentious thing <laughs> you wouldn't think it would be would you um, so again it depends on where you are in the world when you're listening to this so in America they use legal size paper um, which is eight and a half by eleven in size the rest and Canada the rest of the world we use a four and we tend to use metric measurements so we're all about the centimeters and North America and Canada are all about the inches um, and there are different ways of realizing how thick cards are I mean it, for stamping up we say thick white card and normal white card and um, so you get an idea for us which one is obviously thicker and which one is thinner um, but in the rest of the world we have a, a system called GSM grams per square meter and obviously the the higher something weighs per square meter the thicker it is so so you know let's throw some figures out there an 80 GSM card um, you might see that on your printer paper that you buy to go through your print home printer 70 GSM is quite thin that's a normal kind of photocopy paper 
thickness, so that gives you an idea that that's really papery rather than card. But you'll also know that you can go 80 GSM and upwards. And some of these papers are like 220 GSM, um, but that's not really how we buy our card um, in the rest of the world. We tend to, we don't tend to buy it by GSM, even though we know what that now is. Um, we just tend to buy it by thick, or it's card, or it's paper. But even some um, of the pattern papers that I have can be as thick as card. Um, from different brands. So again, sometimes you're only going to know um, by the thickness or by buying and, and trialing things out. Um, and people get to get their own um, favourite papers and card. Card, well, crafting in general, you do get what you pay for. It is one of those things. So the best, I would always say that to you to buy the best quality that you can because you've got more chances of having a more professional finish. So you can buy... Um, Oh, and let, let's, let's do America as well. Sorry, nearly forgot you there. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm getting all excited about going into colour card. Um, so America has a, a whole system. Um, they have um, cover paper, what, oh, it, all sorts of things. And it's a little bit difficult to kind of understand in here. Um, this is one thing that I cover. Um, I have an ultimate card making course or a um, card making 101 course. And that goes into it because... There's so many different things, um, or, and it's, it always is always done by kind of um, poundage. So that is a poundage, and it's poundage per reams, and it gets very complicated. So you will find um, in Northern America um, that most people will use a cover um, card, and it will give the weight. So you'll be far more familiar over there. But again, I would really recommend that if you can get to a local craft shop and you can get a feel for things... Um, again, Stamping Up is available in North America and Canada. Um, so again, you can get it out. It's just one, one thing and that's it. Um, but yeah, there's a whole thing. We're going to go into it in that course. But I don't think that's for today. We could get very confused. Um, so you can get um, your card, whether it's legal size or whether it's A4 card, you can get in all sorts of colours. So you can get the white or you can get them in packs like this. So this is you know red and every colour of the rainbow you can imagine we do kind of 24 sheets in a pack. But you can also have mixed packs as well. Um, so you don't have to have, they think, oh, I'm never going to use that many. I don't need 24 sheets of red. And um, then there are mixed packs available as well. So look for those. So get yourself a good pack of white, good quality, the best you can afford. Um, thick white, I would say. Um, and then get yourself some mixed packs of card as well. So that's where you can, and then you'd make your own card blanks from there as well. I mean, the most popular sizes, I would say, for cards are in North America. They have a size called A2, whereas in the, um, in the rest of the world, our A4 paper cut in half is A5. And then we fold that in half to make A6 size cards. But we do also make 3x3, three three, which is inches, 4x4, 5x5, 6x6. Um, all those sorts of um, sizes as well, but you'll often need to make them if you want a particular colour, or again, you, you'll have a restricted um, availability of what's in those particular card sizes. Um, but do bear in mind that when you're looking online, um, if you're American, you know, our A2 isn't the same as your A2. Um, so you do need to be careful. It can be very confusing when we all start using A's um, when we use, have completely different um, sizing things. Right, so let's go on from card and card blanks and faces onto pattern paper. Now, generally, pattern paper comes in 6x6 size, that's inches, or 12x12. 12 12. Um, they're often double-sided, not always, but often double-sided patterns. So you've got one pattern on one side and one a different one on the other. Um, they will come in mixed packs, generally, but you can also, if you go to a card um, craft shop, you can also buy by the sheet if there's a particular one that you like as well. But you can also, I just wanted to bring this one in because you can see on there it starts getting all fancy schmancy. There are lots of different papers you can get from velvets and foils and a whole heap of other things um, that are fancy schmancy papers and just make everything look like, wow, wow, look at that. But to give you an idea, so here's, here's a pack of six by six. So it's got this pattern, I'll take just out the first sheet, it's got this pattern on this side, and then it's got that pattern on that side. Now, what you will find in pattern papers, if I can find something, 
as well. Oh, of course, I'm not going to be able to find a bit now. Oh, there we go. There's a sheet. You may have patterns like this, which are lovely on their own, and you can cut them down to um, go with your card. But you can actually cut out all these individual elements as well. Um, so that could be something that you could look at. So when you're looking for things, well, OK, I've got my paper, I've got my card now, but what do I put on that? You could cut out some things like that. You could use that little dimensional that I said to raise it up off of the card. Um, you'll see lots of cards now in the shops, um, even ones that are in sort of Hallmark and somewhere like that, um, that do now have raised bits. It just makes it more interesting, a bit posher. Um, so there's that sort of thing. So again, look at those. So that, that flower, those flowers, I could use the whole sheet or I could cut these out and use them on my cards as well, for example. So that's generally your pattern paper. Again, they come in different thicknesses. They don't tend, sorry, tend to advertise what their weights are, particularly on the packs. Um, again, you get to know a brand um, and you get to know the thicknesses that they have. Right, so once we've kind of done um, card and pattern paper, what's the next thing you need to do? Well, you need to have some cutting devices. So this could be scissors or it could be oh just so i don't know you can buy envelopes as well in packs so for us our c6 envelopes which fit a6 cards um you can buy in packs like that as well so you can buy envelopes separately um to so you can make your own card bases but right let's go scissors so i'll start with scissors just buy yourself and treat yourself to a decent pair of scissors um the smaller they are the more detail you can have, the, the easier they are to manage. But if I'm also cutting through big pieces of card or, or that, I want bigger ones as well. So up to you which one you get. Once you've kind of got into your card making a little bit more, I would recommend that you have a small pair of scissors like this that you only use for ribbons and twines and things like that. Um, just purely because every time you cut scissors, um, cut paper with scissors or card with scissors, you start to blunt it a little bit. Um, and you with sort of ribbon and twine you don't so if you've got one pair tie a bit of ribbon on there and only ever use them for your um for your ribbons and twines and shout at anybody in the family who thinks that they can use those scissors for anything that they want <laughs> they're not expensive but i really would recommend that um so you know, start, start with something like that. It's a lot easier to cut things out of paper and that with a smaller pair of scissors. But if you've got a decent pair of good household scissors, they will do as well. Now, you might sit there and think, well, I can't cut straight lines. Well, you don't need to. Secondary um, devices, so two different ones here. There are other styles as well, she says. And I'm not going to go into this too much, um, but these are trimmers. So this is a, is a, it's got a trimmer there. It's got a blade in there. It's also got what we call a scoring um, blade, but it's not a blade. It's completely thick. I couldn't do that without. I would cut my finger. But if I do this, it, it's, it's not. It's flat. Um, so they often come with one just cutting blade. But if, if you're posh, you get a scoring blade as well. Um, so you can measure card on these. You can cut them. You can also get these kind of devices, which guillotine, so you might remember these from school, um, more kind of guillotine chop. Um, there's pros and cons of all sorts. There's also rotary blade ones and all things like that. But get yourself a decent trimmer. You should pay something between sort of 20 and 30 pounds, so maybe sort of 20 or 30 dollars probably as well. Um, and once you've got that, you just replace the blades. Um, and again, it depends the blades last depending on how long you use it. If you're making hundreds of cards every day, you're going to need some replacement blades pretty quickly. But if you're making one card a month, you won't need them for very long. But I would always recommend that you get a pack of spare blades when you buy your trimmer. Um, but various ones and say different sizes, get 12 by 12 ones and things like that. But that will help you to, um, to cut straight. Now, that is something that people say they struggle with. I'm just thought I haven't got a piece of card here because I've just thrown it all in the floor. So my top tips for using a trimmer, because people struggle, is your trimmer should have a kind of an edge. Do not put your bit of card in here and try and cut it like that. There's nothing holding it in place. It will wiggle about. You want to butt it up. Now, it depends. You could be... I'm going to see if I can move that. There we go. I could butt at the bottom or at the top. You can turn it upside down, depending on whether you're left-handed or right-handed. Now, in this case, my blade actually goes down there. That's my cutting line. So I need to measure across here. How, so if I wanted seven centimetres or two and three-quarter inches, I'd move it along to here 
and then first of all i am i'm pushing that up against it not so hard that i'm creasing it well i did then um, but i'm holding it in place i'm also going to hold that bit here this this plastic um what's it called blank. mine's gone blank hold that in place as well and i'm not going to go from the top like i'm showing you here because as i push this i could especially if i'm not holding it that tightly I could start pushing that and you can see that that would start going like that and that's not going to cut me a straight line either. So again, I'm butting it up somewhere and then I'm going to push it. So I'm going to hold that tight. I'm going to push that down. Not really, really hard that, you know, you're hurting your fingers, but enough that it's not going to move. And then I'm going to push against it as well. So again, there's even less chance of me um, wiggling it in it moving so there's my kind of top trick tips for trimmers but again we'll go through more um, at another time but this is just introductory and we're already on 25 minutes <laughs> right so that's your cutting devices and um, next things I'm going to go through is glues we've already talked about dimensionals we've already talked about glue dots that's another way that glue dots come on a roll like that wet glue dry glue Get a wet glue. This one, for example, is Tombow Mono Liquid or Multi Liquid Glue. And um, it has a thin end, which is the only one I use because that gives me more control. It means I don't squeeze really hard and the whole, the whole tub comes out. It does actually have another end as well, but as you can see, I've never used it. <laughs> so I am a wet glue. It's a PVA glue. Uh, dries pretty quickly it gives you a little bit of wiggle room to start with when you put it down if it's not 100% right straight off the dot you've got about one or two seconds to wiggle it till you are happy and then it sticks fast um, I did have somebody say um, how do I get the corners um, to stick down well again if you are adding glue let's say we're adding glue to this piece of card and I'm just going here and I'm kind of just doing this and going over it you take the lid off glue would come out but not for now Unless you are going right in the corner and right down the sides with a small amount. Some people prefer to dot. You can dot as well rather than solid. But you need to go right into those corners for those corners to have some glue to be able to put it down. If you kind of go to here, this would flap up eventually over time. So you want to go small, gentle, don't squeeze very much and go along and into that corner. So hopefully that will have helped that person. And um, then you've got some tape. So again, double-sided tape. It's flat. It's sticky on that side. I stick it down and I peel off the top. And um, again, different glues for different things. I would say my most used glue for card is this one. My most used glue for ribbon is this one. Um, there are lots of other sorts as well. But again, just going through the essentials for today. So something that dimensions it up, 3 d fide, some wet glue. And a dry glue this could be a tape runner as well all sorts of things so that's that now I've lost my, my bit let's see where I am okay the other thing you should have oh she said I'll put that somewhere safe there we go is a bone folder now remember on that trimmer I said that I had a scoring blade this is a similar thing so if your trimmer doesn't come with a scoring blade then get yourself one of these they used to be made out of bone they're not made out of bone anymore they're made out of plastic but they're often like this they're long long lasting you can't really snap it either you take it would take something so once you've got this you've got this for life it's got a pointed end but it's not sharp and what it does is i could oh i got my trimmer and i wanted to score a line let's get my piece of card again and let's say i wanted to score a line at six and i didn't have my scoring blade on my trimmer you could then put that through and do that it breaks the fibers in the paper and it just means that it gives you a more, a more professional fold, but also a decorative finish, finish as well. I could sit there and I could do that three times and have a nice three line pattern. Or again, you could do a frame by doing one across, one down, one across, one down. So a very useful thing. But when I fold my um, card blanks in half, if you watch one of my other videos, you'll see I don't tend to score them too much because I could never get it right. Um, <laughs> but I tell you, I'll show you. I'll show you how I do it. But let's let's do this one. So this one is scored. So this is what this does. It leaves that line down there. So when I fold mine, I tend to because I cut all my own card blanks. I tend to get this corner match it up with that one. This corner match it up with this one. So pretend we haven't got a, a fold in it. So I would go like that, 
Go like that. When I'm absolutely happy, it's where I want it. Then I get my bone folder and I just fold it along like that. I'm not using my finger because I've probably got ink all over my finger. I'm not using my fingernail because I might catch something or I might have nail varnish that comes off on the side of the card. So using something like that really makes a flat, perfect fold and burnishes it in lovely. And say so, these are really inexpensive. And again, once you've got it, you've got it for life. But that just makes it, if your cards keep kind of um, aren't flat, they're kind of, you can't see that, they're in the air like that. Just again, just making sure it's perfectly folded there means it goes flat completely. Okay, so that's a bone folder. We've done scissors, we've done trimmers, we've done glues. We've also done die cuts and stickers and die cut stickers. Something called toppers you might come across as well. Um, I haven't got a topper here. Now in my days, top of, <laughs> when my days, it was before what we call die cutting machines and all things like that, but I'm not gonna go into that right now. Um, so you used to have people that used to have, for example, like a little square of card and it might have had a design, a handbag or gift or something like that, that was also cut out and it was all done. There was a few rhinestones already on it and I literally peeled that off and I stuck it on my card and that's great and there's nothing wrong with that. The only thing that happened over the years was that, well, we wanted that present to be a certain colour and we wanted that bag to be a certain style and we wanted that, that we didn't want rhinestones, we wanted those enamel dots and things like that. So hence the die cutting and embossing machine was launched. Now I'm going to quickly show you one. They are manual ones, there are electric ones. I can't believe I didn't get this. They're all very, very similar. This is a mini one. Um, so again, of course, this is a Stampin' Up! one, um, but they often come looking something like that. They've got a handle to one side, just think mangle, <laughs> if you're that old, like me. Um, and you've got this platform. They have a roller in here, and literally you pass things through here. Um, and so they either emboss, so you put... Oh, I didn't really want to go through this, so I haven't got anything to hand. But you can add a pattern to your plain card. So embossed means raised, debossed means sunken, if you like. Um, so you can emboss and deboss um, with a pattern on card. Um, but you can also die cut. Um, so again, didn't want to go through this because time's ticking. Um, but I just wanted to get an idea. So when you sit there and go, what people are calling about dyes? Why is everyone talking about dyeing? Um, it's not. It's a die cutting machine. The, the implements we use are called dies and um, or embossing folders and say there's part of me that wishes now I'd done this but I, this is basics you do not need one of these machines to get started card making this comes down the line a lot of the machines are, 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 are if I said a hundred pounds a hundred dollars something like that they, they, they're an investment and then you have to buy the embossing folders and dies that go through so there's they're quite an expense you certainly don't need these these didn't exist when I started card making um, and we survived and we made cards, um, but we are certainly more, more, we want more choice now. So this is not in my top tools you need to start card making, but I just wanted to quickly show you that so that you kind of knew what it was that we were talking about and how you make your own uh, toppers. So the last kind of things is just my very basics for stamping. So I showed you briefly um, in that kit. So my first investment ever in stamping was a black ink pad. There's one, they come like this, they're about that size, but as I showed you, you can also get those mini ones as well. So for example, that one there, there we go. They're exactly the same, just a mini version. So some people would get um, a mixture, an assortment of mini ones and buy big versions in the colors that they're most popular. Some people will just go straight to the big ones. Some people will travel with these, some people will have both inks, are a whole nother story in themselves. I am not gonna go through that here today. A black ink pad, that's what I started with. It's an all round good black ink pad. But just to show you, other ink pads come in the rainbow of colors. You name it, you can get an ink pad that comes in a color. Now the ink within these ink pads are either suspended, the dye is suspended in water or in alcohol. Both these are not alcohol. So, black ink. It means that you can, I've just thought, what did I do with that? Yeah, you can get a stamp, 
It's just an ink pad. So they're felt, they're sponge. I have to say I'm not a lover of sponge um, ink pads just because it goes all over the place. Um, I prefer the felt based um, or a very, very compacted sponge. Um, but anyway, get yourself a black ink pad. You can stamp sentiments with this. You can stamp images with this. Um, let me quickly move on to different types of stamp. So when I were a lad, <laughs> um, you can, we, we could only get rubber stamps like that. Now this is a massive one because I wanted to show you how big some stamps can go. These are normally to cover a whole background. Um, so these, we had red rubber, which was on a bit of sponge on a wood block. And this was the only way that stamps came. You bought them individually and everything had a wood block attached. But as time has gone on, um, it's quite costly to have this bit of wood against every stamp and it's not very sustainable. We know we're cutting down a lot of trees to do that. So what we tend to find now is that we have two main popular um, stamps or ways of stamp sets. I wanted to show you these. So you can get stamp sets in groups um, that have words on. You can have stamp sets with words and pictures now you wouldn't necessarily colour these in, you would stamp this in a green and you'd stamp that perhaps in a terracotta or something like that. Um, and then you have stamps like this one here that you can, again you've got sentiments but you might build a bit more of a scene. You stamp them in black and you colour them in and there's a whole variety. So the two most popular ways now of having, and perhaps that'll be on a sheet, there we go, is what we saw earlier in that kit. These are called photopolymer stamps, some people call them clear stamps. Um, but they're made of a, pl a plastic. They are cheaper to produce than red rubber stamps. Um, they will last a long, long time, but they won't last forever. They will deteriorate over time, especially if you don't clean them or look after them. Um, but I'm talking years. I'm not talking a couple of months. You know, good quality stamp sets will last you years and years still. Um, but that, that's what that is. So it's plastic, it's photopolymer. And then we have, we call them clean mount, but that's your red rubber. So it comes like this, you just pop them out, they're already die cut out there. Um, so again, this is red rubber on the sponge, so exactly the same as is on those wooden blocks, but without the wooden block. Um, so when I want to use one of these, I just pop it out like this, I take off the backing, and this is actually, oh, should have done that a bit better. I've picked a better one. This, I mean, it's not sticky to the touch, but what the one thing that you need when you've got these stamps, you can't sit there, or you could try, but you wouldn't do a very good job, trying to ink it up. Look, it's all bendy and flexible. No. What do we need? You need one of two things. You either need, and I won't have picked the right size here. Let's just pick one. And let's pick a different one. It's not got my name on. <laughs> there we go. It's called an acrylic block. It's the same sizes, shapes, weights as those um, wooden blocks, but they come in a whole variety of sizes. I mean, look, if I pick one of those out, they come long ways, they come small and tiny, however you want. Um, but <laughs> it's not gonna fit on here. Pretend this does. I could just get a proper one. Let me get a proper one. There we go, look, I picked a big stamp. So there we go, it's a whole variety. And th like this one's a couple of quid, this one's about seven or eight quid um, pounds. $10. Um, so they're not huge, um, they're not hugely costly, um, but you will need a selection of them. Um, but again, once you've got them, you've got them for life. They're acrylic, they're thick plastic, you can't break them. And as I say, you, once you've got them, you've got them for life. So let's move these out, out the way. So you can see, so both photopolymer and these red rubber stamps um, stick to these blocks. So there we go, I've got a much better handle now. So I ink it up. Now I could either take my stamp to my ink pad, on a larger stamp, I tend to take my ink pad to my stamp. And there we go. I'm not pushing really, really, really hard. I'm just tapping. And I can tap several times. And let's do I've got a bit of card. Perhaps I should get a bit of card out. Hold on. Ooh. Now, my top tips to get good quality stamped images. Have a good quality piece of card. A good quality stamp a good quality ink. And I'm literally gonna put that down. I haven't, <laughs> I'm gonna push it gently and I'm gonna lift it up. There we go, job done. So I can then, 
cut that out. I can cut out a piece and layer it on another card, colored card. I can leave it plain, I can color it, I can do whatever I wanna do with it. Um, I'm not gonna go into all the coloring tools there are, but I'm gonna introduce you to a couple in just a second. Now, some people will struggle with acrylic blocks. Um, perhaps if you've um, got arthritis or you've got um, manual dexterity problems, um, or you're just not confident. <laughs> you're just not, you haven't got an even pressure. So what we then do instead, and this, there's, a whole, there's a whole heap of reasons why one of these is good, this is called a stamping platform. This one in particular is called a stamparatus. It's got a bit of paper, it's got that foam there, because did you notice the photopolymer didn't have foam in? But that's it. So what I would do for that one is I'd put my piece of card in there. I would lay where I want my stamp to go. And I haven't cleaned this and I should have cleaned it. So let's say, oh, I want my stamp to go there. I'll put a magnet to keep that in place because it's magnetic. So if you have a pacemaker or something like that, this isn't the thing for you. I put that down. So this is like, this takes the place of my acrylic block. So I do that. Now I know it's gonna make a bit of a mark because obviously I didn't clean it, but you would do much better than that and you would clean your stamps. So I'm gonna ink it up again. It's exactly the same as I did before. And actually I'm gonna intentionally do something wrong. I'm gonna just press there. And I'm gonna go, oh no, oh no, I didn't do it right. <laughs> Now, if this was on an acrylic block, it would be really hard, especially on a red rubber stamp, not a see-through photopolymer one, um, to put that back on and try and stamp over and do the bit that I've missed. But when you've got a stamparatus or stamping platform, I can go back in, I can do the bits I've missed and just tap away and look at that. And if I'm not happy, again, black images, often I like really deep, intense black. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to do it again. You can go over and over and over. So if you're doing things like wedding invitations or anything where you make multiples of something, um, this is a, a really good way as well because there we go, we're all done. I take this out of the way. I bring in my next bit of card. I didn't cut my stamp. And I don't need to change it or do anything else with it. I'm happy. I probably haven't done that very well, but you're getting the idea. In we go, next card done. Out we go, next one comes in. Off we go, put your card in place, there we go, in cut my stamp, go again, and so on. So you can see how good that is. I'm not sitting there each time going, right, hold on a minute, hold on, is that right? Is that, oh, 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 is it straight? Am I happy? Am I doing anything like that? There's a whole host of techniques you can do with these. That's a whole nother, that would be a course in itself. Um, but I just wanted to introduce you to a stamping platform. If you have tried stamping and you've given it a good shot and you have not had any successes, I really, really would say to you and recommend one of these devices. Um, they're about £47, pounds, um, so in our dollars, I don't know the actual American dollars, but the equivalent um, currency conversion would be, what, about $60? Um, but again, once you've got it, you've got it for life. Um, it's quite hard to break these. It comes with two of these actually as well. I only use one. Um, but if you were doing multiple layered things and that, you could have you know a different stamp on each side. And I can, I can take this out and I can move it round and I could have another stamp in place on that one and off I go. I'm not going to do any, any more on that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you're struggling, that would be something that I recommend. So I'm hoping that that has really helped. So we've gone through, just to kind of summarise what we've done, we have gone through, if you've never start, that them, come back to me, hello. <laughs> um, so if you've never started again at all, kits would be the thing that I'd start with. I'm going to move my list now so I can see it and I should put it there. In fact, I'm going to stick it right there. It will fall off, I know. <laughs> so kit, I did, fell off already. Um, so kits never done anything before you want to um, have a really satisfying creative experience in a couple of hours um kits buy yourself a kit and just start playing with that that will get you the bug um and then you'll be off get your card bases your card blanks your a your a4 or legal size full sheets of card that you want to cut to size get yourself some pattern paper now you will find that there are particular companies and stampin up is one of these and this is why i love the company um, when I first started, stamping up wasn't in Europe, um, and 
I must have bought a hundred sheets of green card. I'd go and pick a pattern paper out that had a green in and I'm like, oh, let me go and find a nice bit of green card that goes with this pattern paper. I could never find one that went with it perfectly. And that is one of the um, things with making professional cards is having everything that coordinates beautifully. Not only should it be, you know, sharply cut um, with perfect borders and just good quality, a good quality, um, card and materials um but having things that coordinate and stamping up is they coordinate they we have a card when we have a pattern paper we're even told what color card to use that coordinates with it i mean obviously you can go off piece and do whatever you want but to make your professional card easy coordination um so that we'll have that then there'll be a ribbon that will match completely an ink a pen i didn't do coloring tools <laughs> different kinds of coloring tools let's go let's go briefly through them so these ones are water-based marker pens so they just you would stamp the image and you would color in with those two ends normally a thin end and a fatter end or brush end you could have pencils they could be water coloring pencils they could be i keep moving the camera um anything that you like so you could color in with pencils and then there are alcohol based markers where the dye color is suspended in alcohol there's whys and wherefores, I'm not going to go into it, um, but you, once you have, once you stamp your images and you want to start adding colour, if you're not adding different inks, then these are kind of, kind of your colouring devices. Forgot that, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was it. Um, we went through scissors and trimmers and things like that, so get yourself a decent pair of scissors when you can afford to get a trimmer, get a trimmer. Um, some adhesives and glue, get a wet PVA based kind of glue, some kind of tape, whether it's a tape runner or something which is a dry glue. Um, we went over a bone folder being a good investment. Um, so some stickers and die cuts and things like that are great before you get your own embossing machine and, and die cutting machine. Um, and then your simple for starting off stamping um, your sentiments and things like that. Now obviously you can use your printer, um, every colour, you can print every colour on a printer and a computer. Um, and you can print your sentiments with that and just cut those out. That's perfectly okay. Um, and obviously images and things. Um, but if you want to start stamping, black ink pad, multiple ink pads will follow. <laughs> Get um, yourself a decent kind of sentiment set. There's often sentiment sets that have a congratulations, a happy birthday, happy Christmas, all in one um, that you can purchase. Um, and then if you want to start adding colour, then getting some sort of colouring device. Now... I didn't expect to go on for as long as I did here. <laughs> so I'm really sorry that I've gone on so long, but I really hope you found it useful. Um, it's something that I wish someone had told me when I started. Um, now, that's a super, super brief um, explanation of what we've, what, 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 what are my tips and tips and tools that you need to get started when you're up making cards. Now, if you want to know more, if you want to dive all, well, much, much deeper um, into these things, then I run courses. We currently have, I mean, <laughs> depends on when you're watching this, so registration could be open or you could have a wait list for the ultimate card making course, which covers everything. It's 80, 18 weeks and, uh, or 18, three classes, Card Making 101, Stamping 101, Colouring 101. They're six weeks each, um, and so they're available as a job lot under the Ultimate Card Making um, course, or they will be available at a later date, or currently, depending when you're watching this video, um, as three individual courses as well. Um, so I will put the link under the video for this, but you just need to go to www.thecardmakingacademy.co.uk, and then if you forward slash UCMC, forward slash UCMC. Now, if you think UCMC is ultimate card making course, highly technical. <laughs> so www.thecardmakingacademy.co.uk forward slash UCMC forward slash UCMC. Um, and there'll either be a wait list there for you or if we are open for registration um, and then you'll be able to book your spot on that. Um, so we and say we delve much much deeper. This has been a real kind of flurry across the top. I hope I haven't blown your mind. I hope I've used some um, some words that make it a little bit more meaningful. Um, I've given you my list of things that you need to get started. Um, please don't get overwhelmed. Um, we do have a Facebook group as well. It's called for, um, Card Making for Beginners and Beyond. Um, so it is made. 
aimed, aimed mainly at beginner card makers, but the and beyond, there are lots of people of experience and are happy to share. There's people sharing their makes in there, people that are asking for help and, and tips. So if you don't um, already join, uh, you're not part of our um, Facebook group, then come on over. Go to Facebook and just suit, search for card making for beginners and beyond. And you should find it um, and just ask to join. And that's it, we would love to have you. Um, but as I say, there's other courses and classes and all sorts of things all going on. Cardmakingacademy.co.uk is where to find out what is going on. And yeah, I really look forward to connecting with you again. If there's any questions you've got, just contact me. I'm happy to answer anything or say ask in the Facebook group. Um, we are all here to help. Um, I hope that I've inspired you. That it's, You don't need lots. <laughs> you certainly don't need it all. Um, and once you get some basic good quality stuff, and um, say half of it you've got for life anyway. So come and join the creativity that is card making. And if you've got any questions, then please let me know. Thanks for joining me. Bye bye.